I got it. As this post draws to a close, an indisputable bond began to form between myself and a co-worker. Despite the monotony of working at an office, our increasing affections for one another were too strong to ignore. Our lives continued to entwine, creating a spark that finally grew into a fire between us. Our casual interactions evolved into long talks, veiled glances, and deceptive chances for intimacy. Week by week, our bond deepened, and the fact that our relationship was banned just made us more attracted to one another. We found comfort in one another's presence whenever we needed a respite from the routine of our everyday lives. It was the ideal diversion from our daily routines. The lines between friendship and a deeper, more personal relationship blurred, and we both gave in to the seductive pull of passion. Revealing our relationship to others turned become the binding force between us. It was a thrilling and nerve-wracking game that made me feel both excited and anxious. Our illicit relationship was driven by our secret meetups under the pretense of business commitments, sneaking about to steal kisses and private nooks, and more, which our physical connection intensified. We fooled ourselves into thinking we were unbreakable and that our secret relationship could continue discreetly inside our office. It was a nightmare the day my unfaithful partner's spouse showed up at our home to tell my husband the truth. Up until that point, I persuaded myself that my affair was real and my husband would never discover it. However, the consequences of my decisions finally came up with me, and I felt helpless under the weight of my regret and guilt. My carefully constructed existence was about to come apart because of what I had done. Like any other ordinary workday, the tragic day began in the same manner. It was Friday, and as I gave my husband a hug and a kiss goodbye, I had no idea that the facade of our perfect marriage, which I had worked so hard to build, was about to collapse. I hadn't even seen the impending storm that was quickly arriving since I had been so preoccupied with the responsibilities of my job and getting through my day. My spouse was using his day off to play video games on his PlayStation 5, which is one of his favorite pastimes. He had no idea that someone strange was going to walk into our life and bring with them the weight of a revelation that would turn everything upside down. The loud clang of the doorbell interrupted the silence in our house. My spouse was completely unaware that anything unusual was going to happen. Nevertheless, he was startled to see a woman he had never met before when he opened the door. She identified herself as the spouse of the man I was sleeping with at work. My spouse was shocked in shock as she revealed the devastating truth that had been hidden. For what seemed like an age, the weight of her words lingered in the atmosphere. She unintentionally disclosed that she and her husband had an affair. We'd been betraying one another for a long, long time. She revealed that six months earlier, she had learned of our crimes and had confronted her spouse about the affair. After their talk, she had thought the affair was done, but our passions had triumphed over any morality, and we had restarted our secret relationship. She had contacted me as a last-ditch attempt to keep her marriage intact. She warned me not to get near her partner in case she told my husband everything. But my conceit and the attraction of our illicit relationship overshadowed my sense of reason, and I dismissed her threats as empty rhetoric. I told myself that there would be no negative repercussions if we carried on with our affair. However, the underpinnings of my life started to fall apart as the truth came to light. My spouse, who had been blissfully ignorant of my extramarital affair, was now faced with an unexpected reality. Days of incredulity and heartache followed as he made a choice that would forever change our path in life. Before leaving our shared house, he left a note requesting help from a lawyer and an heir. He was so devastated by the betrayal that he decided to dissolve our marriage and cut all of the connections that had once united us. The filing for divorce served as further evidence of the irreparable harm I had caused. Even after the affair was revealed, my husband refused to keep it inside our marriage because he was so filled with rage and the urge for revenge. Not only had the treachery damaged my personal life, but it had also tarnished the job where the affair had started. Motivated by a combination of righteous rage and bruised pride, my husband came up with a plan to expose the affair to the same people who had unintentionally helped to make it happen. He was determined to face those who had helped with the affair, and with a voice full of purpose, he called the number of the company where I worked. But as soon as someone answered the phone, he was struck with contradictory feelings. Understanding that telling the truth would have a significant effect on the parties concerned, he experienced both anxiety and resolve. His internal turmoil grew louder as the quiet on the other end of the phone grew. Still, my husband held his composure as he broke the devastating news to the gullible people at his wife's former place of employment. He investigated the matter thoroughly, revealing the lies and deceit that had taken place at our workplace. His remarks were crystal clear, cut like jagged pieces of broken trust, with no space for doubt or misunderstanding. The effect was instantaneous, the corridors were alive with whispered exchanges and sidelong glances that mixed scorn, sympathy, and interest about the matter in question. It was not long before we realized that those who had been regarded as highly esteemed were now suffering serious harm to their careers and reputations. Our acts had immediate and significant repercussions. Not only did the disclosure of my private meeting with the other man damage my reputation, but it also had negative effects on my career, adding to my already unbearably high level of pain. 
the consequences of my decisions rippled through every area of my life. I was left to carry the entire weight of my sins alone as a direct and indirect consequence. When the man I had been working with withdrew and turned to his own marriage for solace, I was overcome with a deep sense of loneliness and hopelessness, and all I could think about was the lingering echoes of regret and guilt. I had no choice but to accept this brutal reality as I stood amid the debris of my broken existence. The consequences of my selfish behavior were severe and included losing my husband's affection, our marriage collapsing, my reputation being tarnished, and the unbearable pain caused by my affair. I was filled with regret as I saw the destruction caused by my selfish goals. The stakes were too high when I gambled with love. I paid an enormous price for what I did. I would live with the consequences of my decisions for the rest of my life, always conscious of the suffering I caused to people I cared about. In the end, the affair caused a dramatic change in the dynamics of the workplace in addition to shattering my husband and me's trust. Our acts had far-reaching effects that went well beyond our own lives. As a result, I lost significance and was left with a path littered with shattered connections. We appreciate you listening to this story. Please continue on for another thrilling tale. We lived together for six of the nearly seven years that I was in a relationship with this female. I worked as an electronic consultant, whose job it was to configure systems with a multitude of sensors. It was a lucrative job, but it required a lot of travel. This is merely to set the scene. I eventually got a feeling that things wasn't quite right. Although my intuition told me so, I was unable to identify it. Since I typically follow my intuition, I made up my mind to confirm my suspicion. I carefully placed a little sound-activated recorder in each of our condominium's rooms while she was gone. The device was really little because the storage was on my workplace computer. On a Friday afternoon, I carried out this plan, spent the weekend with her, and enjoyed myself. But Sunday night, I packed my car with a GPS tracker, grabbed my equipment, and drove off. She drove off the next morning, and I headed off to my next place of employment. The original schedule called for a two-week absence. I spoke with her every day for the first week. But when I contacted her during the second week, she was often not there. When I asked her why, she gave me a number of reasons, including work meetings, postponed dinners, and helping her brother, even though it was the time she usually stayed at home. When the two weeks were over, I went back home and straight to my office. After listening to the recordings, I discovered that there was a lot going on in the first week and very little in the second, save for a loud passing car. I decided to listen to the recordings from the first week again, and to my astonishment, I saw that she was talking to another man. To exacerbate the situation, she was speaking, so I could hear both sides of the exchange. As it happens, she had been cheating on us since the beginning of our relationship. When I realized this, I decided it was time for retribution. Finding the person she was having an affair with was my first task. I did some investigating and found that, prior to our meeting, she had worked at a campsite where she had met this guy and his wife and family. After that, I located their residence and looked through their phone records. I looked up the number since, even though this was a few years back, people still used landlines. It was great that the number was listed. When I rang the number, a man picked up. I asked to talk with Mrs. Smith in a professional manner because I was prepared for this. She answered the phone when he called for her. I asked her if she knew my soon-to-be ex-girlfriend. She said that they had invited her over to their house several times since they had first met at the campground. I was surprised to learn about that. I told her that we couldn't talk about the specifics of the situation just then, but I would give her a thorough explanation if she could get in touch with me at a time that worked for her. I gave her my cell phone number in the hopes that she would give it to me back. She got in touch with me two days later, as I had expected. When I told her everything I had taped, at first she didn't believe me. She agreed, but she wasn't convinced when I told her that I would make a copy of the recording and send it to her. I had a lot of work ahead of me. I took all the files to a local recording studio and explained my needs to them. They combined all the separate recordings such that the conversation was finished when she walked around the home. These audio recordings were then burned into the CDs. Five CDs were needed to record the entire talk. I did not, however, mail these CDs to Mrs. Smith. I sent the CDs to her through registered mail and bided my time. She got in touch with me after roughly ten days. She told me she had filed for divorce the day before and seemed calm. For the next two weeks, her spouse was abroad on an oil rig. I had sent her some CDs, which she had listened to and given to her lawyer. The woman's husband had worked his way up to a sizable fortune over the years, which had allowed them to purchase an RV, a boat, and acres of land for camping. She insisted on getting half of it all, though. The speaker couldn't help but chuckle to themselves after hanging up. They believed the spouse deserved what was coming to him because they had heard some disgusting things on recordings. They never revealed this to the girlfriend, though, and acted normally the entire time. I chose to install a tracker on her car for the next week in spite of my reservations. Nothing noteworthy occurred, but things quickly descended into mayhem. My partner was walking about the home, seemingly lost and without purpose. She told me that a friend of hers was going through a divorce when I asked her about her behavior. 
I offered my condolences, but I carried on with my day. Later that night, I saw her seated on the porch, talking on the phone with someone. Although I wasn't really listening, I did note that during the phone call, her voice was growing louder. She entered the bedroom right away once it was over. Curious, I moved to the door when I heard her shuffling around. She was stuffing luggage with clothing. She did not answer when I inquired what she was doing. When she was done packing, she went outside to her car and drove out without a word. Following two weeks of my girlfriend's radio silence, Mrs. Smith gave me a call to give me an update. Her husband had received divorce papers from her, stating adultery as the reason. He naturally refuted the accusation, but Mrs. Smith was able to supply precise information that put an end to his denials. She also verified that she was the one who made the phone call my girlfriend had the night before she departed. Despite Mrs. Smith's denial of speaking out, there was obviously more to the tale. My ex-girlfriend insisted nothing happened, but finally she revealed information that proved she was guilty. She seemed to be saying to my girlfriend that she had found out the truth on her own and that she would share it with me next. This realization clarified the reason behind my girlfriend's sudden departure. I thus took action, cancelling her credit card and starting the process of having her automobile repossessed. I made arrangements to have her insurance cancelled and the utilities turned off. Her father received all of the things she left behind, delivered by movers, along with a letter explaining why she had gone so abruptly. The fact that her father lived two states away added to the complexity of the matter. We lived in a condo, so I made arrangements for a sublease to be exhibited. I moved out and settled into a new condo in a gated community with a card shack in four days. Her automobile was eventually picked up and taken away. Her automobile was repossessed while she was at work. Thankfully, the dealership agreed to cooperate and sell the vehicle to me for the difference. Because he was afraid his employer would find out about his dark secrets, Mr. Smith never expected Mrs. Smith to win her divorce and get her fair share. Regarding my former partner, I never received a message from her. I want to sincerely thank all of my devoted subscribers and listeners. I want to thank everyone for listening to this story. Now, let's read another thrilling tale. We usually sat in his living room, me reclining on the couch with Mark's arms wrapped around me. Just then, Emmett materialized from one of the hallways, and I thought my greatest nightmare had come true. But in a matter of seconds, Mark had pushed me from his arms and gotten to his feet, demonstrating that it was not, in fact, a nightmare. When Mark realized who his friend was, he shoved me away and was punched in the face. Then Emma turned to face me and said, I've been wanting the courage to remove you from my life and the lives of my children, and I finally got it today, seeing you in my best friend's arms. When Emmett stormed out of the home, I tried to follow him, but he disappeared without a trace, and I was unable to catch up with him. I knew I was about to have a catastrophe, but I wasn't prepared to deal with it all just yet. Hello, I'm Alex, and I have been dating Mark for the past two years. I was married to Amit before that, and he had two kids from a prior relationship. I got invited to this important function when Amit was abroad, but he really wanted me to go. I went to a party by myself and was by myself till Mark came up to me. Knowing my connection to his best friend at the event, we clicked right away. We drank a lot of booze and enjoyed each other's company while talking, laughing, and dancing the whole night. Our bond was so great that it finally led to us sharing his car's backseat. Even though we had previously crossed paths, that night's encounter was unlike any other. We made a terrible mistake in judgment that we concealed from other people because we thought it was an isolated incident. After the incident, we parted ways, vowing never to do it again. Still, I couldn't get rid of my yearning for Mark. I didn't feel guilty about betraying my spouse even when I got back home. Instead, I kept looking for reasons to see Mark. I expected to feel bad about what I did to my spouse, but at first, I didn't. I honestly talked to Emmett about Mark, even though I felt I would never be able to face my husband again. My behavior showed no signs of shame or guilt. I began meeting Mark behind my back, making up all kinds of excuses, and each time we got together, we ended up having heated conversations. Though at first we were reluctant to act in this way, eventually we learned to see it as our right to seek happiness. I was happy with my life with Emmett, embraced by his kids, and living in contentment, but I couldn't help but see Mark. My body gave in to an overwhelming craving as Mark and I got intertwined. I didn't understand I was endangering my life since I was so obsessed by my desire. I hadn't seen Mark in a month because Emmett had been staying home with his kids at their request. But I was at my breaking point after a month of abstinence. I decided to have a meeting with Mark when the kids were at school. I made up an explanation for Emmett about our kids, telling him that I promised to get them ice cream after school. After that, I left our house and went straight to Mark's. Emmett, meantime, was by himself at home and made the decision to visit his best friend, who also showed up at his residence. He was perplexed to see my parked car outside his friend's house. I left the house in a few seconds and gave his closest friend a public kiss in front of him. Emmett showed patience by hiding so neither of us would find him after he got back in my car and drove off. I was home by the time he returned, and I was there to greet him and the kids. They talked about getting ice cream, but he disregarded us and went directly to his house office. I was unaware of the incident he had seen involving his company. 
As the days went by, I couldn't help but see a change in his demeanor that lasted for about a week. The more I thought about it, the more I was certain that something was wrong. I finally gathered up the confidence to tell him about it. Looking back, I saw that my own imperfections were what affected my judgment. I always had this inclination to see other people through the distorted spectacles of my own faults. Rather than approaching him with an open dialogue, I hurriedly accused him of adultery while ignoring my own shortcomings. I was surprised when he answered when he heard my charges. I had a strong impulse to get out of there as soon as I was in the same room as him, so I did just that. I stormed out. I believed that the only logical explanation for Emmett's seeming indifference to me was that he was seeing someone else. His conviction was so powerful that it perverted my judgment and kept me from realizing that he had been waiting for the right moment to face me and make me aware of my actual worth and position. He had finally found the strength to confront me after I had been unfaithful for an entire month, and I was forced to deal with the fallout. He told us when he got to Mark's place that he knew everything and that I could do as I pleased because he had no intention of staying in this marriage. I was a little concerned for Mark's safety as I entered the home. I was shocked to hear that he had ended our relationship and that I had to leave his house right away. His abrupt statement surprised me, so I tried to talk him out of it by saying that this was the ideal chance for us to fully admit our affections for one another. Regretfully, Mark was steadfast in his choice. He claimed that because of the shame associated with his past affair with his best friend's wife, he could never formally announce our relationship. I reminded him that he was now with me in a last-ditch effort to save our relationship. But the hard reality of being with someone who had previously been involved in such a sensational scenario was too much for him to handle. When I finally got home, I was overcome with intense emotional pain. Mark's rejection broke my heart and scattered my spirit into a million fragments. I encountered unexpected resistance as I tried to open the gate. Consequently, I turned to knocking on the door. Without saying anything, Ahmed answered the door and gave me two suitcases. Before he could shut the door, I stopped him, bewildered and shocked, and inquired about the contents of the bags. Ahmed informed me that I was no longer welcome at the house and that all of my possessions had been packed up, much to my surprise and dismay. Transcribed in addition, he told me that I could no longer visit his kids, so cutting off all communication between us. This unexpected and terrible loss was almost too much to handle. The man ruthlessly threw away every single photo he had taken of Mark and me over several days. Sadly, I lost everything I held dear, including my partner, children, home, and self-respect, all because of the overwhelming power of lust. The person I had been prepared to sacrifice everything for has likewise abandoned me, because he cannot publicly acknowledge our friendship. I reached out to Emmett multiple times, but he never cared to reply, which hurt my heart and made me feel unloved. Even when I visited the school where our kids were enrolled in the hopes of getting a sight of them, the instructors told me that Emmett had given them orders to stay away from me. I had come to the conclusion that I had cheated on Emmett, but it was too late. Emma won't let me contact those adorable kids, even though I've spent the last three years with them, so I can't enjoy watching them develop and thrive. This seems to be my payback for not being given the chance to own up to my sins or even offer an apology for my adultery. I am therefore left to face the world by myself, carrying the burden of my shame with me till I take my last breath. I mistakenly took all of my blessings for granted, thus this is a price I will have to pay for the rest of my life. Even though I have a lot on my plate, I have to keep going and hold out hope that one day I'll get the chance to put things right. I can only hope that, in the interim, this experience will make me more appreciative of the love and company I am fortunate to have in my life. I eventually gave up trying to get in touch with Emmett over time, realizing that my ingratitude was the main reason I was being punished. I had to swallow a bitter pill, but I had to accept my fate ultimately. Two long years later, I happened to run across Emmett, his kids, and a strange woman at a restaurant. It looked like they were having a nice evening together. I couldn't tell if this was the new woman Emmett was seeing. It just so happened that I was a waitress at the restaurant at the time. I quickly switched tables with another server and headed off to avoid any awkward meetings. Though it was a somber reminder of what I had lost, I understood that it was a result of my own doing. I want to tell everyone not to cheat on their beloved spouses, whether they are already cheating or plan to. Remain truthful and devoted. We appreciate you remaining with us. Let's go on to the last tale. Just as I took up my phone, it started ringing. I believed my fiancé was abroad on business, but a voice on the other end told me she was in bed with her business colleague before I could even say hello. The call ended abruptly, taking me by surprise. My surprise, though, was short-lived as I hurried to answer the doorbell when it rang. There was an envelope on the step, but no one was there when I opened the door. I silently mumbled Eva's name as I started to remove the tape. It wasn't funny if this was a prank of any kind. The envelope opened to reveal a distantly snapped photo of Eva and her business colleague in bed. I knew they were being spied on since I work in it. After calling Eva and getting no response, I called the number on the envelope and spoke with the surveillance officer. The person on the phone identified herself as the wife of the man who was shown in the photos with my girlfriend when I questioned them who they were. 
It was through this startling realization that I learned Eva had dated her business partner prior to our meeting. She started dating me to make him feel envious and regret ending their relationship. I was furious when I discovered her hidden agenda and how she took use of my affection for her to get revenge on her ex. I took a seat and started thinking back to my initial meeting with Eva. I'm Darren, and I'm 25 years old. Eva, who is now 24 years old, and her business needed a website a year ago. I got to know her then. After seeing the website, Eva and her partner gave me their whole office lease. I've been taking care of all of their requirements ever since. Eva eventually picked up the phone when I tried to contact her once again. Eva told me she was in a meeting when I questioned her about why she hadn't been returning my calls. I ended the phone after expressing my desire for her and hearing her response. I quickly turned on my laptop and emailed her a link, which she clicked on right away. I was able to access her phone's camera when she clicked on the link. Regretfully, I wasn't interested in what I saw when I looked through the other end. Eva was laying in bed with a white sheet covering her and her phone in her hand when I spotted her through the camera on her phone. She had just told me she was in a meeting, which left me perplexed as to why she was naked in bed. This information sent my thoughts into overdrive. Her business partner suddenly materialized on television, leaning his head against her shoulder and giving her a kiss. I offered a weak explanation when she asked about the link. It was accidentally emailed to her when it was supposed to go to someone else. She didn't hesitate to accept my explanation. I was blind to the facts because of my love for her. I realized that throughout the whole duration of our relationship, I had been oblivious to her dishonesty. I decided that I would not be her plaything any longer. When she finally arrived the next day, it seemed like an eternity. Taking no time to compose myself, I went to her about her adultery. She initially denied everything, but when I brought up the camera hack, she sighed and admitted without showing any regret. My heart felt as though it had been torn out of my chest. I forced myself to ask her why she'd used me all along, in spite of the anguish. She admitted that she could easily make her ex-boyfriend envious of me. She didn't initially intend to take advantage of me. However, she observed that every time she spoke to me, he became insecure. She thus feigned affection for me, and he pleaded with her to reintegrate him into her life on the day our partnership was formally established. Sometimes she felt bad about taking advantage of me, but she thought it was important to maintain his interest in her. I talked about life with her. I had a lot of love for you at first, but ever since yesterday, I've been feeling irritated. I now feel bad for you since all you had to do was pretend to love me in order to attract your ex-partner's attention. It's among the worst things that may occur to any individual. She answered that I had her permission to end our relationship if I so desired. She added that she had never loved me and had no regrets about it. At that point, I felt it was imperative, so I did it. I warned her that I would not spare her. Because of what she had done to me, she had to pay. After that, I told her to get off my property. She was so enamored of him that she didn't even consider how I might have learned about their relationship. One thing was certain after two days of suffering, I would not allow her to get away with her behavior. She was so intent on making things right that it was hard for me to forgive her for whatever remorse she might have felt about her actions. I thought about it for two days and came up with a plan that needed me to be in her office. I so made the decision to visit her. She asked why I was here, and I told her that I had come to get my stuff. I knew she had a merger meeting later that afternoon, and it took me just a few seconds to replace her flash drive with mine. After getting my belongings back, I was prepared to leave the workplace, but I was left feeling defeated and wondering how I would take matters into my own hands. Someone called my name and asked me to investigate a projector problem in a meeting room, but fate had other ideas. This was the kind of opportunity I had been waiting for, and now it was here. I seized the opportunity to replace the flash drive and calibrate the projector after going into the room where Eva and he were sitting. My real purpose was to watch Eva's anguish. I pretended that I needed the projector turned on in order to make sure it worked. Together with the photos I took after breaking into her camera, these were the ones that were forwarded to me. She didn't give me that chance, so I saved the photos I took with the compromised camera in case she refuted my charges. I ruined her career and personal life with those pictures. Everyone in the room, including the new merger partners and their maintenance staff, started whispering to each other. Nobody was surprised that Eva and I were dating, and everyone knew that her partner was married. They immediately began to view them critically as soon as they saw them in these pictures. I came up to her and told her that at the time, I thought it was necessary. Their business partners excused themselves from the meeting, and her partner left without warning, announcing the end of their romance. I reminded her that I had warned her that there would be consequences if she used me for her personal benefit. Nothing is left for you now, not even the company, not the love of your life, not the one who loved you completely, so I think I've succeeded in getting my retribution on you. She screamed and flung her laptop to the floor. She had no regrets about what she had done to me, and neither did I. I broke off all contact with her and concentrated on getting better. 
My broken heart was healed by my need for vengeance. Eva texted me one day and asked to get together. She persisted, saying that if I didn't come, I didn't love her, even though I disregarded her message. She finally asked me to come to her office. I could just make out a figure seated in a chair by the window because the room was so poorly lighted. I turned on the light, filling the space with brightness. I could tell as soon as I saw her that her regret had grown more intense. When I asked her why she had called me so suddenly, she pleaded for a chance to make things right and rekindle our love. She also admitted to her transgression. She remarked, I now realize how serious my mistakes were. I understand the consequences of what I did and the suffering I brought upon you. I told her that our relationship was officially finished and gave her the box with her belongings. Your sense of emptiness in my absence will be a continual reminder of the damage you've done and the affection you lost. When I explained to her how serious her acts had become, she was overcome with regret and sadness. She collapsed on her knees, sobbing uncontrollably as the weight of her guilt grew intolerable. She tried to talk to me and work things out for a few months. Sadly, there are no second chances in real life, so Eva had to accept the repercussions of her choices. After some time, Eva was waiting for her car at the valet stand when I saw her and my fiancé leaving a restaurant. She was clearly upset, and as we glanced at each other, she appeared to be about to come up to me. Rather, I took my girlfriend's hand and turned to go. I was aware after this interaction that I had truly moved on, but that did not mean I was prepared to give Eva another chance to make things right. My advice is that sometimes it's a tiny world and you should concentrate on your current partner since that's all you need.